I'm not here to address or to explain, uh, to give uh, answers, you know. To quote Lawrence Wiener, my dear Lawrence Wiener, I would say it's about perplexity, you know. If there is enough playful and playful, thoughtful, you know, ideas taking a, a sensitive uh, form, uh, I think that's what an artist is doing. It's always difficult to just point the moment in which you decide to be an artist. And of course, it's a mix of desire, chance, uh, opportunity. There was something in the banality of life, in the what was there that I could not deal with, and the need of something different. And that's where it probably pushed me toward that direction. I mean, it takes time to define a language, right? Uh, uh, you, I mean, personally, I was lost for years, uh, not finding something that was, uh, that I feel the satisfaction of, uh, that I felt, I felt always something was looking like something, or, or I was unhappy about the way it could develop, or it could unfold, uh, or it was too trapped or too compact. Uh, I, I guess when I start to find my language was a moment where I, I, I was more interested about uh, creating situations, uh, rather than object uh, in general. Uh, when I say object, I don't mean sculpture, I mean something to have a certain compact compactness, right? So the day I could understood that, uh, somehow uh, he had helped to construct uh, from that moment ahead. The work needed somehow to become, an, as you said before, an environment or a milieu. Um, and I searched around and there was a part that they didn't use, which was an island on, the, on this river. So now you have a physical milieu enclosed, uh, surrounded by water. Once in a while there's a dam above and the, the dam open. Uh, and as it opens, it overflows, not the entire island, but at least half of it. That's something that I was very interested in. I scanned the whole island, um, which is quite a large island. It's like a football field-like size. Um, every detail, the stone, the, the piece of wood, the trees, the human who were there during the recording, uh, some trash of the factory, of the past um, pulp factory, so some metal machine parts, and boats, and whatever you can imagine. Animals who were there. So now you have a place which is a simulation, or at least a simulate environment, not active yet, of the whole island. You can circulate in that thing. Now, within that place, uh, I have two milieu. One which is digital, which is a neural network and that generates mutation of the existing element in the island. Right. So you have this simulation, the trees, the stone, uh, and then there's some transformation of this element. They mutate, they have shapes. That is given by the by the neural network, we use different other, we use GAN, we use DALI to, to just generate these shapes. Simultaneously, uh, you have the physical milieu that where there is sensors uh, that capture the water level, the toxicity of the, the soil, the wind, the, the sun, um, movement of animal. So the bioactivity, the chemical activity is also captured in real time. Once in a while, once we take, because it's a volumetric uh, object, we take a part and we implement it. The, the mutation, the digital simulation, somehow uh, go out and is implanted. It exceeds it exceed the simulation and uh, it manifests in the physical world. So they also have uh, a life in themselves. They will either sustain or decompose over time. They also affect the place, affecting the sensors. Uh, well, that's, the, that's the project. So you, as a, as a, as a witness, you, you, you you penetrate the island, you cross, it's a cross, it's, a, it's a, not a journey, it will be, but it's a, it's a walk through uh, that milieu, uh, that two milieu uh, that overlap. Uh, and, and you arrive in front of that screen that you see behind me, uh, you understand that the camera itself, not only the, 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 the world is changing as uh, uncontrollable, in a non, that I do not control the way it changes, but the camera also have a certain personality, a certain, his own intelligence, so the way it, it uh, captures is change over time. The, 
the work that I did, that uh, Documenta 13, it's called Until. That was a compost of a park. Uh, and in that compost, which is a place where things transform, change, it's a place also where things are unorganized. It's they let the thing, uh, they drop things in. It's the back, somehow, the, the back of the park. I use it in the same methodology, uh, meaning the compost and the fact that it's a place where you throw things out. I, I uh, somehow increase that methodology to just say, what about if I throw element of history uh, in it, element of fictions, and let them be. Within that place was that uh, statue. Uh, it's a very generic statue somehow. On that statue, she had the head uh, covered uh, by a beehive. Um, that beehive grow in time. There is plants around that are usually plants that are linked to either, either physiologically or psychologically affect the human body. There's plants. There's bees are flying all around, making a pollinization, going back. And they are just uh, be growing, 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 that kind of organ somehow on the, on the body of that person. Within that place, there's other kind of character. There's a dog with a pink leg. You have a, a tree that was uh, uprooted, uh, Joseph Beuys tree, uh, from the famous uh, work of Joseph Beuys that is now drop on the place <clears throat> and there's ants who are just uh, eating the tree slowly and slowly and moving around so you have something that is of obviously endlessly actually changing modifying you have contingency you have uh, unpredictability you have uh, something that is not exposed somehow it's not an exhibition it's not order it's not mis there's no mise en scène somehow somehow the work always change in the context is in. It always takes its environment. So that's what happened in, in Kunsten. We installed, the, it's actually exactly the work of Documenta. It's there in the garden and in a few days they just pollinate and they start. So they start again, they start again. So you have a dormant stage. Organization, yeah, of course, and, 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 and collective intelligence are the, of course, things who have interest me at first. Uh, and as other any animal, it's also the contingency that bring any animal that I'm interested in. They also nicely, um, I love the fact that they, they, they just go to different places, they connect things themselves. Um, I'm interested in that. I do also, I'm also interested about the fact that they are building. I do, do not mind that shapes meaning shift somehow i do not mind that things are incomplete that the work are incomplete enough to welcome other conditions that they are not close and close with the meaning with the ontology with the truth uh, um, so they have always the capacity to as i was saying before to modify uh, and eventually to the, the, the meaning modify, not only the, the way they appear or disappear. You have a construct, uh, a construct environment, what you see is something very grey. You see a kind of a broken stone. You see, you uh, may, might have the feeling that there was maybe one unity, and you see that that unity has been broken into pieces. And uh, within that landscape, you have different uh, animals. They are all usually uh, with very poor color, nearly black and white, gray, and they are moving very, very slowly. The animal has been selected for their behavior, as I always do. They become somehow, it's like choosing character without choosing narration, you know. You have characters because you know that they're going to do again and again. Uh, they have instinctual behavior, so that is a, is a pattern somehow that will come back and come back. You can, as, as if you will build a, a, a narrative not from creating, you know, just based on the... So you do not control again the relation, but you know that each one have a particularity 
that will come back. It's a situation that will repeat somehow, but will modify each time, each time. So it's not the same. It's never, never the same, but there is some recurrency. It's how to create a situation that have no beginning and no hand. And not only that, but there's no linearity. So you do not know what, what could occur uh, at any time uh, within. And that was a way to do a kind of something live rather than a re something recorded uh, out of it. It will be more complicated somehow. It's compli within this uh, using um, instinctual behavior that go beyond the life of one single entity um, uh, allowed that to occur. I also at that time wanted to bring other intelligence at play. That that somehow the idea is function like really like a nearly like the metastase that take different shapes, go through that milieu. So the milieu has to be sensitive again. As here there were sensors, uh, um, the place as we say was an old ice skating ring. I cut the floor of the ring and using a logic game. Uh, and within this logic game, it gave me a certain way to cut it. In the middle, you have an aquarium in which you have uh, this conus textile, which is, uh, who have like patterns like, uh, that you can see in Game of Life, uh, Rule 30, it's called. That somehow I take the shell and I scan it, and it gives the, the tempo, and that open or close the ceiling, uh, who are this uh, shape, who are like black reverse pyramid, letting the, the sun or the rain entering the place. On the other side you have a, a black thing which is an incubator and within it there is cancer cell captured by a microscope and we calculate when the division, if the division is fast or not fast according to the environment right around the, that incubator. The threshold give a, give a signal that trigger an augmented reality. So if you are in the space you can actually look with your phone and you see these kind of pyramids and they just also themselves, they overlap with the, uh, the actual ones who are there. But a bit like here, as I was, we were mentioning before, what is happening is that um, same thing. If there is a certain amount of this virtual uh, shape flying around the space, the place, it changes its effect. So if there is some, a certain amount of them within the virtual world, it affects the physical world, etc., etc., etc. So there's, the, there's different feedback loop. What was interesting is to find no master somehow, to find no center uh, within that place. Somehow there's not one um, departure point uh, within that narrative. Uh, I'm trying that the work somehow uh, have its own uh, agency that milieu, it's a really a milieu that has its own agency and somehow is indifferent, at least in its process, to the gaze or to the public. It doesn't mean that the public do not affect the... I mean, we can talk about the ants who are there. Uh, they, it's, we can affect them, probably, but it's not that they are doing things for us, right? So that's what I mean with the work. The monkey is wearing a human mask. It's a mask that could be a mask of a cyborg or maybe something that can go from, come from no theater. You don't know, it's, I have not really a precise definition of the mask, uh, but it's enough a human mask. You recognize that as a human mask. And it's carried by a monkey that is wearing also clothes. And the mask is a young uh, woman. Uh, or girl eventually. Uh, so you don't know if you are facing actually a child, a cyborg, etc. Uh, etc. Et um, <clears throat> the, the, the monkey is doing is just repeating an action. So again this uh, instinct, uh, something that he have also learned, so it's between learning and instinct. The, the, he has been um, 
train to serve the client, to bring the towel or to bring the little sake uh, bo uh, bottle. So you see this animal in this uh, suspended time where he actually is in between instruction and instinct. The relation with the mask that confuse always person, right? Once you put a mask on someone, and we have a mask, uh, we all carry the human mask, right? Uh, it's not that we're not having a mask. Uh, but of course, uh, you can see how people get still confused looking at film, for example. The, to, they are sometimes not able to distinguish between what is the character, what's the actor, what's the role, which is three different things, right? So I'm playing with this confusion and I'm playing with the capacity, the empathy, the classic empathy you have with the character. Here being something that we should have an empathy because it's supposed to be human, but it's a trap. The, the human mask is a trap that allowed us somehow to capture otherness. Yeah, you know, when I start an idea, I never really, I don't know what the outcome will be. I don't know, the truth is. I take the, the, the thing that somehow uh, will be the most coherent with the, with, with the idea that I have. Uh, one, of course, is more linear process of the film, and in that regard, the one with the human mask, as I took the decision to do a very conventional film, the most conventional I could do, so it's very classically edited uh, to to somehow make the, the, the medium itself, the film, being disappear completely. Um, uh, when I work with, uh, with environment or milieu, it's very different, right? Um, there is no linearity in that regard. Simulation is kind of uh, in between somehow, uh, because there's no beginning or end. I think maybe that is something that, that accept simulation is an answer to contingency in that regard. I am not interested in binar binarity. Uh, I'm more in the queer <laughs> zone, you know. Uh, I'm in the quasi, I'm in the in-between. I'm in the, I do not want again to, to control the politic between A and B. Things are, are not equal, but I, I consider them uh, equally, right? Uh, uh, there's a certain form of uh, indifferentiation between them, uh, uh, but I distinguish them. And I'm interested about contingency in a certain way, so of what is not predictable, uh, of what is unknown, of what is so at all, meaning. I think that has been somehow a core of the work, uh, so I cannot say no. I, I, I prefer to let at least some um, decision or some uh, event occurring uh, within the work to others, you know, or to whatever they are, biotic or, abiot or abiotic, but yes. I'm trying my best to to this intentionality to this to kind of sustain to I'm still the one who have decided to do that but I'm trying within the within the process of it to 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 find ways to not control the outcome